At an elevation 8,300 feet east of the Sierra Nevada lies the scattered remains of a town once home to 10,000 people. All have been taken up, but their tools, buildings, and memories linger. Eventually, the elements will erase all of them, just like they did in neighboring Aurora, Nevada. Join us on this episode of History Hunters as we explore Bodie, perhaps California's most famous ghost town. Sarah and I visited Bodie together in 2016, and I enjoyed watching her explore Bodie in such daring ways. Sarah generally doesn't like to see the same place twice, but since we didn't have a YouTube channel four years ago, I encouraged her to go back, exploring again. So here we are, August 2020. The first thing to greet us here are the cows, munching on something over here. Check out the outhouse. I watch you guys Thank like you. twice and a week. Son, that was a good Is time. that right? New York is awesome. Where do you guys live? Uh, El Dorado Hills. <laughs> I'm a big history kind of. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. I've no, read every like, book like about this area, and then you come film it. And then you debunk a lot of the little history things <laughs> in the yeah, area. It's so. a little new for us. Well, for me, uh, because history? we're used to this kind of attention, but. I got recognized a couple of times at our local Subaru dealership and I was just kind of taken aback. Oh, that's yeah. so funny. Well, I was watching you and I'm like, I know her. And I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> where's the husband? So they have, they do history, uh, oh, they do remarkable. They go into places that most people don't even go to. Mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> like this place. <laughs> no, I mean, you find these really unique places and then they look up all the history and they tell you about it. Yeah. Um, oh, it's, uh, it's you guys YouTube. have a YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah. yeah? Well, you're doing a great well, job. <laughs> <laughs> just... There's probably well, there. <laughs> So we have fans here in Bodie. Yes. They just spotted us. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It is, it is. And in the COVID world, there's so few good things to watch on television anymore. <laughs> I'm like on YouTube all the time. And so I'm like, I'm trying to look for things that interest me. How do you feel about being recognized? Well, that would be the third time I was recognized. They didn't see you yet, but they were looking for you. <laughs> it's just weird. It's, I don't know. So this is the Methodist Church. Everything here has been in a state of arrested decay, which means they will not restore it as new, but they will not let it fall into disrepair as well. Look at that very old building. Bodie actually fell in decline about 1915. It was a ghost town. Just uh, amazing. How about this old wood? In my lifetime, this 1882 church hasn't been painted, but I found a photo that shows that it was painted white once. I was excited to learn that the larger-than-life John Wayne visited Bodie for a 1970 TV special. And one scene in particular had him going up to the steeple and walking up to the church steps. So this building right here is the John Kane House. He was one of the instrumental people in this area. He arrived in Bodie at the age of 25 in 1879. Kane had entered the lumber business and put barges in a steamship on Mono Lake to transport wood. In 1888, he became a banker and kept the Bodie Bank open until 1932. He actually acquired the Standard Company mining properties in 1915 through court action and soon became a principal property owner in town. He always believed Bodie's mines would prosper again. Before my legs are too sore to do everything. Yeah. I want to go out that way. Okay. Where we haven't been before. She's talking about that mine over there. Here's an old mining cart that they probably just put here would not belong here otherwise. So you gotta see on the side of this building, I 
It's actually little plates of tin that have been nailed into place. Right here on this corner stood the legendary Bono and members of the Irish rock band U2. In 87, the band rented a bus in Reno and headed south to Joshua Tree. Made a random stop here along the way to visit Bodie, where they were photographed for their Joshua Tree album, including this shot in front of the Wheaton and Lower store. That album, by the way, their sixth, made them international rock stars. Yes, check it out. And this is amazing. A little dress uh, form in the window. Give a peek on the inside. This is an old store. I'm trying to give you a good peek at it. And that coffee grinder. This town was established sometime in the 1850s, I believe. It was discovered by William Bodie. William Bodie actually went to the Lee Vining area where he did not get to see this town prosper. However, all the mining interests created a spectacular boom here. There was about 7,000 to 10,000 people here at one time at its zenith. And uh, it's been kept as a ghost town in a state of arrested decay. With the mines tapped out, Bodie's population dropped from 700 in 1910 to about 120 in 1920. By then it was a ghost town visited by folks in those newfangled contraptions called automobiles. This is the old schoolhouse, originally the Bonton Lodging House. And when a juvenile delinquent burned the school down, this became the school. And by 1879, there were about 615 kids who were going to school here and it closed in 1942. This is to give you an idea of what the inside of the school looks like, dust covered desks. I remember it looking this way in the 1970s, so it hasn't changed much. So all around Bodie, you will see just broken bits of, look at this, obviously a cup or something. remember our Aurora video we talked about all the people who drank and uh, just found this old bottle it's been broken people like to drink their cares away up here bottom of this is just rotting off this is kind of what you see inside Topographical view. Right there, down there is where we entered at the ranger station. Pay eight dollars a head to come in here. Something else is kind of interesting on top. You see the electrical lines with the old fashioned glass insulators that you usually find in antique stores, but apparently there's still an operation here. What'd you find? Nothing is free from tagging. Oh, it's a spring. I'm guessing this was some sort of like a stove, maybe? Yeah, it's a stove. Check it out. An old porcelain. It's not porcelain, it's metal. It was porcelain. See that? Look at that. up there metal for roofing up here it snows gets icy so high on this hill I thought I'd tell you a little bit about William Bodie he was a native of Poughkeepsie New York he discovered gold here in 1859 he died not too long after that in a blizzard I understand that was close to Lee Vining which is south of here he, he passed away he didn't 
actually get to realize that uh, this town would carry his name one day. Well, he passed away in 1859 and his bones were discovered about 20 years later. They brought him back here and it's said that he's buried somewhere on this hill overlooking the town of Bodie. His name was spelled B-O-D-E-Y. Somehow it got changed to B-O-D-I-E. From 1871 to 1881, there were 30 mines here and nine stamp mills. Bodie had a reputation as a lawless town. In fact, the saying used to be, goodbye God, I'm going to Bodie. This is the boundaries of the property. You're not supposed to go that way, over that way. So whenever you see dirt been exposed like this, you know that they're tailings. In other words, the holes that they dug in the ground to try to dig out the minerals was kicked out just like a gopher would in a gopher hole. And uh, that would indicate that right up here was some kind of diggings. And you can see there's a hole right there. It's probably been filled in. So at its zenith, this town had about 60 saloons, many near Bonanza Street, prostitutes. That's for like a purse. It sure oh, is. The hinges are... Oh, look at that. That's cool. I suppose it was for a, a fancy lady. Could be. Here's another cabin over here. Looks like it had a cellar. Is that a cellar? I guess. Yeah, it sure is. Can you see in there? You can't really see in there. They boarded this all up. Oh, there you go. They papered the walls with the old newspaper in some of them. Looks like fabric type of wallpaper. Hey, look. Oh, full of animal dung. One of the cabins close by is the Hoover cabin. It was inhabited by Theodore Jesse Hoover, who was the older brother of Herbert Hoover, future president of the United States. So Theodore was a mining engineer who lived here in Bodie from the summer of 1903 to 1905. And with him was his wife, Mildred. She lived here. Theodore died in 1955, and he's buried in Santa Cruz, California. Their cabin is about a hundred feet from the mill. What is that? Some sort of clamp of some sort. Big giant bolt. Yeah. I picked up. Kind of looks like those ones from that hold buildings together. Some of those cross supports. Some kind of wood, maybe. So I found this piece of metal. It looks like it could be to the end of a tobacco can. Prince Albert may have been in this can. You know what? I think it's what are these? Oh. Looks like a metal tissue box. Hey, well. what's it say? Lipton. Lipton's delicious coffee. Coffee can. Cool, huh? Sure doesn't seem like they had a very good uh, disposal system for garbage around here. It's just been like, hey, I'm done with this. Throw it down the hill here from my cabin. They must have tossed a whole mattress out over here. There's a bunch of them. Mattresses. Nothing really in there. I don't want to get too far from the fence because I want to know where that fence breaks. In the days before indoor plumbing, this is where you got to come to take your poop. <laughs> There's a 
thing hanging here. What is that? Like there is electricity to it or something. What is that? There's no knob. They probably don't want you going in it. Obviously. So we gotta try. What is that? It's a little tiny thing. I could only guess that might be some kind of woodshed or something. I don't know. Look at these holes in the ground. Like everybody decided to just go digging in their backyard for gold here. Well, I'm wondering, is that the original place for the outhouse? That can't be the original place for the outhouse. So maybe one of these holes that's covered up is where that originally was because if there is poop in there, meh, it wouldn't smell very good. I'm wondering if this is timber to shore up the mine shafts and stuff. There's like a metal pipe. There's this. There's big hunks of, see here's some more. Oh, this is a U-joint, right? No, no it's not. It's too. Well, like here is the sled. That was something to hold a um, pipe. Look at the sled right here. Oh, it has metal, what are those yeah. things called? Look at this old mattress, box spring. Oops. It's got uh, some kind of ceramic deal in it. There's the standard mill up there. This mill was built in 1899 after an 1898 fire destroyed the original building. Standard was the most successful of 30 mining companies operating in the Boating Mining District. Heavy iron rods known as stamps broke up the quartz rock containing gold and the silver. Mercury and later cyanide was used to separate the metals from the crushed rock. It was first known as Bunker Hill and then the Bullion Mine. A mine collapsed in 1875, revealed a rich ore vein, and started the rush to Bodie. The mine was renamed the Standard in 1877 and yielded over, get this, more than $18 million over 38 years. They didn't have indoor plumbing, but look, they have a fire hydrant. Look at this old fire hydrant. I guess you could attach your horse to it. No, it's probably a, a water pump as well. You're not gonna believe this, but that is a safe tipped on its side. Chimney. Oh, a coin. Just kidding. <laughs> All kinds of mining equipment right in here. This is an old winch system, cable system that was used in that mine right there. Huge steel cables. Look at the. Uh, looks like it's carved so you could shove it in the ground like it uh, screwed onto something I'm sure this was used uh, to load up with ore and then it was pulled up by a cable it's music There's another big hole. It's been filled in. It looks like there was a building on it and it collapsed. It's too bad that this old jalopy was allowed to sit here and do this. 
Does anybody know what this was? Old instrument panel right here. This car was so old it had one of these type of headlamps that bolted onto the front of it. I'm gonna go over here and check out the remains of this building here. It looks like it's still standing. Not sure what this building was. Interesting, huh? Very cool. So here's the old firehouse. It was rebuilt in 1930 by the CCC. Bodie's biggest fires were here on July 25th, 1892 and June 23rd, 1932. So the 1892 fire started on North Main Street in a restaurant owned by a Mrs. James Perry and consumed about 60 buildings. Because there was a valve that was closed, firefighting efforts were delayed. Lack of water also plagued those who battled the 1932 fire. The devastating fire of June 23rd, 1932 was allegedly caused by a boy that was almost three years old named Bill Godward. The story goes that a teacher invited the small boy and eight other children of the community to a birthday party at the school. Bill supposedly had his heart set on some ice cream to be served, but when Jello was served instead, he stormed out of the building and went home to fetch some matches. Apparently he liked to play with matches and he ignited a vacant building behind the Sawdust Corner Saloon and a fire spread over town, taking out 40 buildings, including the bank, stores, and the Occidental Hotel. Bill was reportedly such a troubled child that he was sent off to a military school later. As a side note, Bill was born in August 1929, and as his mother, Delcy, returned with him from the hospital, she found that her house and the town was being used for the filming of the movie Hell's Heroes, starring Charles Bickford. It's said that the baby was held in one of the scenes with one of the actors. He died at the age of 21 after sustaining injuries in a 1951 car crash near Susanville. This was Sam Leon's bar and Joe Hamner's barber shop. The bar was opened in 1937 by Sam Leon after losing his U.S. hotel in the 1932 fire. This building was previously a restaurant owned by the Heist family. Leon was born in China in 1879. He also ran cafes and boarding houses in Bodie. Look at the front of that building, that's cool. Shingles attached. With only black and white and often fuzzy images of those who existed over a century ago, it's easy to forget they lived in a world of color just as we do. The sun bleached exteriors of the now bare wood homes that remain were once painted and the wallpapers inside were not tattered and faded cloths like they are today, but were bright and fresh. Those who inhabited Bodhi so long ago had the same struggles that we do today, making a living, finding love and significance, and chasing merriment in a sorrowful place of toil and hard work. But they knew how to have fun as well, goofing around from the camera like we do, playing competitive games like baseball, and entertaining themselves with games. The kids would run and chase each other in their youth until one day, age and time took their toll. They showed up for work when they didn't want to, often trading the sunshine for the dark bowels of the earth in search of gold and silver as they risk life and limb to earn a buck. They've all passed into another realm of eternity. Stay tuned because our journey to Bodhi isn't over and we're saving lots more for part two.